Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna make some Black Ops 3 Cobble Gums and Liquid Divinium. I am gonna make just these four, but you can use the techniques I used here to make any other Cobble Gum you want. But if you wanna know how to make these, just stay tuned. For the polymer clay, you'll need light brown, orange, darker brown, blue, purple, white, two types of gold, yellow, blue, green, orange, and red. Now this orange and this orange look different because I added that brown to this orange and I made that. So you, if you have brown and orange, you can make that one. These are slightly bit darker than the ones in the back and those I just added a tiny bit of black and I made them slightly darker and just for the rest everything is the same except for this one I just put a little bit of white to that one just made it lighter and that's it hold my clay at least then you'll need some ping pong balls I have four because I'm only gonna make four couple gums a rolling pin a white pen or a paintbrush with acrylic paint I just prefer the pen it has more control some bacon bond to attach the polymer clay to the ping pong balls, facto knife or cutting tool, and a circle cutter about the size of a quarter. Or you could actually use a quarter and trace around that. Some glaze to make the gumballs shiny, a purple and white pen, these are from Jelly Roll. Or if you have purple and white acrylic paint, you can use that instead, just with a paintbrush the gobble gums themselves. Now for the liquid divinium, some glass vials. You can find these at Michael's or Duran's. Metallic paint. I have this blue. It doesn't have to be this shade of blue. It could be any other color as long as it has metallic pigments in it. Food coloring. Blue one. Water. I have it in this little container, but yeah, water. And two little containers to mix them. You don't need two, but I'm using two just to show you guys the difference between the colors. So here we're going to make the Percaholic Gobblegum. First put away the little ball of orange and then roll out all the three colors into some semi-thick snakes. Then you twist them, roll them, twist them again, bend them in half, twist them again and then roll them again. You just keep doing that until you get a marbled look. And once you do, you bend it in thirds like so and roll it into a ball. Once you have it rolled, you take your rolling pin and flatten it pretty thinly. Like so. Now you take the ping pong ball and the bacon bond and you put the bacon bond all over the ping pong ball. Now with your finger, just rub the bacon bond all around the ball. You take your clay and smooth it around smooth it on around the ball. It will overlap in some spots, but that's okay because you could just cut um you could just cut that off. You want to remove the excess to make it easier to work with. And then continue smoothing it all around. Here, you just flatten the bumpy parts with your finger, just put some pressure. And then you roll it in your palms. You will get air bubbles, so when you do, take your knife or anything pointy and pop them and squish out the air. Then one last roll and you end up with this. Now you take the little bit of orange that we put aside and flatten it really thin. Take the circle cutter and cut out a circle. And you just put it in on top of the ball. And you smooth it out with your finger. 
I have an, another method to putting the little circle on. I'll show you guys later. So now for the purple marbled ball. Put away the purple again and then roll the other two. This one is going to be less twisting and turning because it's less marbled than the percolic. So like before, just twist and roll. This is going to be the on the house cobble gum. Now this was this one wasn't getting the stripes that I wanted to, so I went ahead and took some more white and added some stripes. And then rolled it out till it ended up with this. So then again, take the bacon bond and wrap the clay around the ball. Roll out the small purple one, cut out a circle, and attach it. Same thing for the other ones. These are just simple because it's one single color. Now, for this, there's another method. You could take the circle cutter and actually cut out a part from these. Just peel off the clay. Add some bacon bond. Roll out the small circle and place it right where you took out the other one from. And just blend in the seams. And you get this. It is a much cleaner application than the other one. I wish I would have figured this out for the other two. Same thing for the purple one. These are going to be Aftertaste and Phoenix Up. They both have little paint speckles. You're just going to want to roll them out really thinly. It doesn't really work the f always on the first try, but then if you keep on doing it, you'll get these little flakes. And then just tap them onto the gumba. And you get these little spots of paint. I think this really captures the effect really nicely. And you just do it with every other color. Here's the yellow. The blue. It is a slightly darker blue than that blue of the gumball. red and finally green When you're done with the speckling, just give it, give it a light roll and you're good. Here they are, both done. Now to bake, you want to put some scrap clay and then make a little indent in them with your nail so the balls won't roll away when you put them in the oven. Here they all are. Take out the vials from their packaging, set them aside, get your little containers, fill them halfway with water, 
or not halfway, but equal amounts, then add the food coloring. Add as many drops as you want. I added two, but you could add more. Then take the metallic paint and add as many drops as you want as well. And then just mix it. And blend them together. Now the cool thing about the metallic paint is that it sets. So when you don't touch it, it's just the regular blue and when you mix it it kind of gives it the effect that the little mica powders are glowing so that's cool then just fill the vial don't overfill it because you won't get a air bubble and it won't allow it to mix so I, I took some out then you put the cork plug Now this is optional, if you want to make the divinium stay in there permanently, you want to take out the cork and add some super glue to it. And just put the cork right, right back in. You might also want to put some glue on top so the water won't get out. So now you take the darker gold, roll it into a thin snake and the lighter gold and roll it into a rectangle. Once you have a rectangle, just cut that rectangle into two. And then put it right below the cork and cut it where they both meet and blend in the seam. Now take the snake of the darker gold and put it right on top of the lighter gold and make two rows of the darker gold. Now you take the lighter gold and add little circles all around it. Now that these are all done, just take them off the plate and put these to bake. Take off the little thing. Now you're ready to paint. So just do the initial circle around like so. You definitely want a reference picture for all your gobble gums. And I can't really, I mean, help you guys much out with anything else other than just that. I mean, you're just pretty much watching me make it. But I recommend the pens a lot because you have way more control than you would with a tiny, thin paintbrush. So here is the Percaholic. Now for the rest of the balls, just go ahead and make the initial circle. And again, just keep looking back and forth at your reference picture. That's the key. For this one, I just started with white, put purple, and then added white again to make a lavender color if you mess up you can use your blade to scrape it off or a paintbrush with some water and clean it all around here I'm just defining his arm with the darker purple I chose the gobble gums that were not that difficult and that were pretty much just like stick figures. The ones with guns and all that stuff, that's too difficult. Too much detail for a pen. The next gobble gum is on the house. It's just a bottle. Be sure to leave a highlight on top and on the bottom. I believe this was the easiest out of all four of them.
and last we have aftertaste this one was also kind of simple the hardest part of this one was just leaving that negative space of the bottles in front of his chest then I just highlighted his head with, a, with the exacto and here they all are all ready for the gloss first I started with the liquid diviniums and I moved on to the actual gumballs but be sure to do just one stroke not more than one at a time just like that and then set it to dry so load up your brush nice and loaded and then just wipe once that's it once if you do it multiple times the paint will come off and it will smudge the the artwork all that work for nothing would be wasted so just do it once and then once that dries just get the rest of the gumball and glaze the rest of it so here they are all complete here you could see the settled mica powders but giving it a shake reveals them it gives it the effect that it glows so here side by side and then giving it a quick shake it looks pretty cool I like that effect a lot but yeah here is Phoenix up Perkaholic. Aftertaste. And on the house. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.